Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy! I found this piece of, uh, I think it's probably alder. It's about 10 and a half by 11 and a half. I just kind of rounded the corners. I didn't try and make it round. I'd like to try and preserve as much nature in here as I can, but I really don't expect to be able to do that. Anyway, we're just going to turn a bowl, just a regular old bowl. This is not going to be a natural edge or a live edge bowl. This is going to be a flat flat top bowl because I've drilled my hole here and I'm going to mount that on the woodworm screw and that will become the top or the inside of the bowl. This will be the bottom of the bowl. I'm always excited to start a new turning and today's no exception so hold on. I've got this mounted up on my woodworm screw with tailstock support. There's a crack that goes through here, goes all the way but it stops uh, about a third of the way through the thickness. This end has this large area of rot, I suppose. What I see here is, uh, I don't know what to call these little bumps, but I think that indicates there may be some figure in this wood. I'm hoping for that. Uh, this tree branch coming out of here does show a knot on the top side, so maybe that'll be good once we get inside the ball. So my goal at this point is just to round it up on the outside, come up with some sort of shape. Like I said, try and leave as much of nature in here as I can, but due to the size and shape of this, it's probably just going to end up being a round ball. We'll see. We'll see as we go. So stand by. I'm going to put my mask and face shield on. I have a freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge, and I can't wait to tear into this thing. I'll be turning at 600 RPM. I don't have a shape in mind yet. No idea. We'll just see what comes of it. I'm not necessarily adverse to leaving that flat spot, but I have to keep, you know. I was thinking I had to remove all of this. Maybe not. Maybe I can uh, put a little CA on there. Looks like that crack is going to stick with us through the whole thing, which is okay. Maybe. Maybe I'll work on that tenon. Well, what size do we want to go with? What do I have here? I might just go with uh, the larger, larger jaws. It's two and an eighth or three and an eighth. Well, that's a good solid tenon anyway. Okay, back to what? Back to the profile, I guess. Starting to get a design in mind here. Nothing special. I think I'll just kind of dish this out. Just kind of like I have it already, but a little more pronounced, a little deeper in the middle here and flare back out.
Well, I'm kind of where I want to be. I guess I'm going to have to saturate this with CA. It's the only way I'm going to save it. And if I remove it, I'm going to have a very small bowl. If you've never applied this much at one time, you may be surprised that uh, as this dries, maybe you can see the smoke coming up off of there. It puts out some pretty heavy fumes as well, so you kind of want to step back. But I'm not done. You don't want to be breathing this stuff in and it will burn your eyes. And I know there's other ways to handle this. So far I haven't really been interested in them. I tend to like to leave natural defects as much as I can. That's kind of what I'm all about is just leave the wood as I found it, but turn it into some sort of shape. This may just be a waste of glue, I don't know. I could see this from the top of the piece, but uh, I didn't know how deep it went. So I'm just going to let that set for probably 10 minutes. Well, I think that's where I'm going to stop on the uh, shaping. That's pretty much what I had in mind once I got it in mind. And this does feel a lot more solid than it did a, a bit ago. So I'm going to work on this tenon. Going to create the dovetail. And I think that's going to work. And I think uh, I don't even have to remove this. I think that'll fit in my inside the jaws. They're deep enough. So I guess it's time for sanding. Not my favorite. Yours either, I'm sure. I do have a pretty good finish on here, but I'll probably still start at 80. This is kind of rough. So 80 through 400 with a two inch sanding disc. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next hour or so. Uh, I do have to fess up here. I made my tenon too small. It was supposed to be 3 and an eighth inch and it was 3 inches. And it wouldn't stay in the, my large jaws. So I reduced it to two, 2 inches I guess. And I'll just use it in the smaller jaws which will be just fine. And I took that little nub off because that wouldn't fit inside the smaller jaws. So I'll be sanding for another hour or so and then I'll bring you back and we'll put a finish on here. See you in a bit. Well this sanded up real nice. I'm very happy with uh, how smooth this turned out. And I'm very happy that there is indeed a lot of figure in this wood like I thought there might be. I'm not too sure about my, I can't call it a patch, but this is the area that I applied a lot of CA to. And I don't know if that's going to hold up once I start removing wood from the inside of the bowl. And I'm applying Howard Feed and Wax, just like I did with my last project, the, uh, the four-legged walnut bowl. That turned out so well on there, I was just real pleased with it, and it still looks good. So I thought I would give it a go on this lighter color and see how it turns out. I did notice the temperature out here is uh, just over 40 degrees. And I noticed when I used this feed and wax on the walnut bowl that it was really hard to apply. 
uh, really hard to actually get out of the bottle. And I think that's because of the temperature. So I set, I set this bottle in front of uh, my little heater for a while here. And sure enough, that thins it right out. So maybe I'll have to keep it in the house during these colder months. It is April now. And it's springtime, and you would think that it would be warming up, but uh, some days they're warmer and mostly they're not. So I might just have to carry this in and out of the house if I'm going to be using it on a regular basis. It's real easy to use, I'll say that for it. I don't know how well it's going to last. It's orange oil, carnauba wax, and beeswax. And I haven't looked into the properties of all of that combination to see just how well it's supposed to do. It looks good. That's that's about all I can say for it. It looks good. It feels good. So I'm going to let this set for the 20 minutes they suggest and then come out here and wipe it off and then buff it and it'll be time to turn this around and start working on the inside. That's always my favorite part. So I'll see you back here after lunch going to be turning at 730 RPM with a freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm a little worried about all this rot right here. That's what I had to patch right over here. I thought I better stop and work on this rim a little bit. It's kind of uh, uneven and jagged. I've got this flat spot on the rim that I kind of like and I, I don't want to lose that. When you do this, you have to really be careful of this edge because it's razor sharp now. That'll cut right through you. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, back to the inside. Some pretty nice grain in here for what most people consider firewood. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the tailstock. It's just driving me batty. I want to work on this wall thickness just a little more. Yeah, that's better. I just can't go too thin because of the defect here. That's about maybe three-eighths of an inch thicker than I'd like, but I don't think I should go any thinner. I'll clean that up just a little bit and then we'll move to the middle.
<laughs> and now I got a hole in here. Look at that. That whole piece wants to fall out of there. Well, and there's not much there. I can't really just glue it. I'm going to have to fill it, I guess, with something. I've been thinking about trying coffee grounds. I've never... I don't really feel cracks. If they're natural cracks, I tend to leave them. But this is uh, worse than most. Those cracks don't bother me so much yet. But I can see light through here. Well, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some tape on the outside of this where it's all sanded and finished and everything. I'm going to put tape on the outside here. And I'm going to go in the house and get some coffee. And I'm going to get my CA glue and see if I can't fix that somehow or another. Uh, I'm hoping the tape will keep it from messing up the outside all finished. I don't want to have to return that. And I really don't want to have to re-sand it either. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be taking a little break while I gather my needed accessories and I'll be back. Well, I really have no idea what it is I'm doing here. I put the tape on the uh, outside of the bowl. I pressed it in as good as I could to seal up the crack because I don't want any of this glue going through, but I suppose that's not likely anyway. Well, I mean, it, it is likely the glue is going to go through. So I'm just going to apply some of this stick fast CA glue uh, in, in here. Then I've got some dark coffee that I'm going to sprinkle in. And I got a little stick, I'm going to poke it in there and tap on here and hope it all goes in there and then I'll apply more glue, I guess. Never, never done it before, so here we go. This is the expensive coffee because it's darker. That's my weekend coffee. I hate to waste it. more glue I guess a little more coffee maybe I guess I'll just let that set a while. I can't really turn too much. I, I am going to scrape. Hopefully a scraper will take care of this. But I'm already pretty thin. Now I could fill these cracks. And this one uh, I can see light through there. But I don't, I don't typically fill that kind of crack. I'm only doing this one for structural integrity. Maybe a little more glue. So I'll just let that set up for, I don't know, 10 minutes or something and I'll be back. Still got a lot of good coffee left here. Maybe I'll go fix a cup. I'm just going to try a sheer scrape on here.
Well, it seems to uh, have worked. Maybe. I'll try my negative rake scraper. All right, time for sanding. I am going to pull my tape off out here and see if I've got anything I have to clean up out there. I'm hoping not. So I'll be sanding here for a little bit. It doesn't look too bad. Looks pretty good actually. My patch here with the coffee grounds looks pretty good. Almost makes me wish I filled all the cracks, but that's really not what I'm about. Although I might do it one day. I think it looks pretty good in there. So, I'll be sanding. So the sanding went pretty smoothly. And I'm just putting on the Howard Feed Wax. I think the more I use this stuff, the more I like it left a nice seems like hard finish on the outside like I say I don't know how well it's gonna last and how well it's gonna put up with people handling it only time will tell that I guess it's real easy to apply when it's warmed up a bit I do have this area here that where I applied the uh, CA on the outside I don't I don't know what to call it cellulose maybe Maybe there's just not much woody material left right here. It's sanded uh, somewhat irregularly. It isn't flat. Like this is flat here. That's not flat. It sort of uh, gave way to the sandpaper, if that makes any sense. It, it's smooth, but it's not flat. I don't know what else to call it. Waviness, I guess, to it. So I'll finish applying this. Let it sit 20 minutes. Wipe it off. Buff it and then it'll be time to turn it around and take that tenon off. And that's when I'm gonna bring you back. For all of its defects, this is a nice, pretty piece of wood. So many different kinds of grain going on in there. Knots, splits, bug holes, different colors. I mean, this, this looks like maple instead of alder. I've got my flat side here, natural flat side that was already on there. I've got this waviness that uh, came from the very soft wood that, that I had to reinforce with CA. Here's my coffee patch. That turned out pretty good. So I'm pretty pleased with it so far. Let's get this thing off of here and remove the tenon. And some non-slip fabric and the bowl. Bring up the tailstock. I still have my center point there. And I just like to spin it up a little bit and hold my thumbnail here and be sure that it hits equally all the way around. And it looks pretty good. So I'm going to start with a quarter inch bowl gouge, take away most of this material. Okay, let's switch. Maybe I'll go with a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. That'll get in there pretty well. I'm going to make one last check. Just making sure I have clearance and I've got about a 30 seconds of an inch. You just get that as small as you're comfortable with. Turn the speed down a little bit to keep it controllable. Place the bevel against the bottom of the bowl, pressing towards the headstock. You can do this one-handed. Then you can take your left hand and put it on the switch. 
And when that little nub quits turning, you're done. Like that. That just leaves a little bit of sanding to do on the bottom. Of course, I have to sand this whole unfinished area. But you've just got a little piece there in the middle to sand up. So I'll do that over here on the workbench. Got a little surprise ending for you here. And you may or may not believe me, but I'm glad it happened. This is so typical of the pieces that I turn, the wood that I work with. Although, it usually happens while I'm working it, not after. Here's one little clue. See this? What do you think? I'm liking it. The bowl was sitting here and I picked it up and I picked it up by that. And I could tell that it was thinner than the rest of the bowl. And I thought, boy, I probably shouldn't be hanging on to that. And whoop, fell right out of there. So I'm glad it happened. I'm glad it happened to me and not someone that I've given this to or something. And it gives me the chance to fix it. I'm not going to replace it, obviously. That would be dang near impossible. What I am going to do is use my sandal flex and sand this up, although it isn't all that rough. But I'm going to sand it up just a little bit and put some finish on there and call it a feature. It's the kind of thing that, that I deal with every day with the pieces I work on although they usually break out while I'm turning them. My coffee patch is still here, and it goes clear up in here. And this is, I've, I've pulled at this, trying to get any more off of here that I can, and nothing more wants to come, including my patch, my coffee grounds. So I will get set up on the lathe, and I'll show you how I'm gonna clean that up, and put some finish on it. Don't be disappointed, I'm not. So what I've done is I've just put my keyless chuck in the chuck and installed my sandal flex. This is 180 grit, that's the finest I have of this stuff, but that'll be fine for this. I'm just taking it easy and I'm just gonna smooth that out. Yeah. That's just that's just so typical of the wood I use. I like it. And to be honest, I, I didn't love it before. I didn't love that part of it. I, I pretty much like the bowl because there's a lot of nice green in there. But I didn't like that part that was so much thinner than the rest of the bowl. This is like a 3 16th inch wall. And right in that area, it was more like slightly over a 16th of an inch. So now I'll take some 400 grit sandpaper and just smooth this up even more, although uh, there's, no, there's no little jaggedies, there's nothing catching my finger here, but I, I just want it to be smooth. And then I'll apply a little more finish and it'll be done, yippee. Well, there it is. One alder bowl with some of the most interesting grain. This is that kind of like a ribbon grain? I'm not real sure about that. All these different colors. 
knots, defects, and gaps as it turns out. Makes a nice place to put your thumb to hold it. <laughs> the bottom finished up real nice. Got it signed there. Got a flat spot here that was just natural. I didn't, I didn't try and get it round. Beautiful knot hole. My coffee patch intact right in here. I like it. I'd be interested to hear what you think about this piece. What do you think about this? Do you think it adds to it or detracts? You won't hurt my feelings. Let me know. Let me know what you'd do. Toss it in the burn pile. Feature it on a special place in the house. Put your thumb there for carrying purposes. Yeah, pretty pretty comfortable that way. You like the grain? You like this flat spot on here? Do you hate the whole thing? Let me know what you think. I can handle it. I hope you did like this video. At least the video. You don't have to like the piece. I hope you learned something. I certainly learned something. First time I ever used coffee. First time I ever had something fall apart afterwards. That's just part of the fun. Part of the game. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and become one. I plan on doing this for a while. I've got quite a few videos out there now and more to come. If you want to share this video, feel free. I'd love that. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.